EA have been absolutely lambasted for loot boxes in Star Wars Battlefront 2 since the game came out in November. Following the outrage, EA and DICE froze the microtransactions and promised to rework the progression system. Well, now they've started to do some of the things that they promised. In a recent blog post, Battlefront 2 developers DICE outlined the first steps they'll take to address issues with the game's progression system in multiplayer. Multiplayer progression is about developing your online character and profile with new abilities, characters, weapons, whatever. It's in low of games, but Battlefront tied all of that in with a loot box system, so how is DICE going to try and improve this mess? Well first and foremost they're increasing the end of round payout that players receive upon finishing a multiplayer match, and the game will now reward the top players with bonus credits. Second, DICE are going to triple the credit cap in the offline arcade mode before the 24 hour time limit sets in, that's a cap which stops you earning credits after you've earned a certain amount. Previously the limit for earning credits in arcade mode was 500 before a 24 hour cooldown timer kicked in, but DICE have increased the cap now to 1500 credits. Finally, the daily login crates, which are absolute rubbish at the moment, will offer more rewards, specifically crafting parts, which can be used to make more powerful star cars, which in turn make your abilities more powerful in game. The blog post also mentions new content is being added to the game to celebrate the upcoming release of Star Wars The Last Jedi in cinemas. This content comes in the form of a new hero and a new villain. The these being Finn and Captain Phasma from the Force Awakens movie, some new maps and new vehicles. Perhaps the most interesting thing DICE mention in the blog post is the upcoming story DLC which adds more chapters to the campaign. All this content is being released for free and will be released on December the 13th. So that uh, DLC stuff was planned, they'd already announced that stuff in a roadmap beforehand and Finn and Captain Phasma who are from the new kind of trilogy I guess and, and that's all to come inside the last Jedi, it's all a bit of uh, extra marketing for the game. That's not really a surprise, but the, the story and DLC stuff is pretty cool, I guess. I don't know if they'd actually announced that, but it's certainly news to me. I didn't know that was coming. These are like quite minor changes, actually, but they are they are important ones, I suppose. But they've got to go a lot further than this uh, to, to claw back any of the ground that, they, that they've lost. Increasing daily login crate rewards doesn't take much because they're shite and upping upping a cap is ridiculous because the cap shouldn't be there in the first place the cap is only there because they need to make the loot boxes valuable and they're not valuable if you can just grind away offline for as long as you want this is all basic basic stuff they need to go a lot further so the people that have already bought the game um, this is great news for them because they're getting all this extra stuff and you know they're not as strict with the amount of credits that you earn and all that sort of shit yeah, I mean it's great news for people who already have bought and own the game for other people who are looking to buy the game I don't think this goes far enough at all. The fact that there's still a limit, like Mike said, on the credits that you can earn in single player is bullshit. It, it, should, it shouldn't be there in the first place. Why is it there? There's, 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 it makes no sense. It's just one example of their whole attitude towards it. That, that, whole, that whole arcade mode thing just captures everything that's wrong with it for me. Elsewhere in the news, PUBG fans have been assured that loot boxes in the game will never become a pay-to-win situation. In a Q&A, developer Bluehole CEO Chang Han Kim said, quote, as you may already know we will never add anything that affects the gameplay. However, there is a relatively strong demand for cosmetic items. Since the official launch is our top priority, we plan on adding new items after that. Kim also brought up something a little unexpected, the possibility of a single player training mode for the game. Quote, many players are requesting a tutorial mode or a shooting range and we believe this could be helpful for some players. So another little PUBG update, there was a new vehicle announced or uh, unveiled for the uh, upcoming desert map so that's another another little bit of juicy pub pubg info to get people yeah. excited if you weren't excited enough i think it's interesting that the you know they're marketing this thing at the moment and then you know also in the middle of all that they're having to go yeah but we're not going to do pay to win loot boxes <laughs> they, they still have to say that kind of stuff because of because of what's happening with star wars battlefront and that i guess so they're still having to do a bit of uh, damage limitation while they're you know hyping up the next bit of content and in this is actual news news this week amazon's Alexa Alexa is to be integrated to work with Destiny 2. Alexa is of course Amazon's virtual home assistant that you just shout at to make it play music, control smart home devices, give you some information, read the news, set alarms, stuff like that. The Destiny 2 ghost skill for Alexa is the first ever voice integration in a live gaming experience. The press release detailing the crossover explains you can use a variety of utterances that range from asking Alexa to ask ghost to equip 
your raid loadout or to tell you who the Red Legion are. You can also apparently ask Alexa to ask Ghost to call for backup or give some advice on what to do next. Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg said, quote, The Ghost serves as your guide and companion in Destiny 2. Now players will be able to bring that experience into the real world with them through Alexa. The lines between in-game and out-of-game have been blurred in an incredible new way. The limited edition Destiny 2 Ghost is also now available for pre-order to coincide with this. It's a Wi-Fi enabled speaker in the shape of a ghost from the game that works alongside Alexa devices and that's available for pre-order now for 80 quid before it's December 19th release. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because the, the ghost is a little assistant thing, the Ale Alexa Amazon Echo is a little assistant thing. Bit of a crossover there, I suppose. What a shit idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think I could see maybe um, integrating some sort of voice. I mean, it's, is it the same thing as Connect though? You know, you do. Yeah. I guess they tried it in the past with uh, talking to games and uh, trying to get your gaming device to respond to you with your voice. It, it didn't work with the Connect. What was what's making them think it work here? I don't know. I mean, it's a bit of crossover marketing, is all it is, isn't it? A bit of uh, pre-Christmas build-up excitement stuff. They got this new bit of tat out, which is the Wi-Fi speaker. They want to shift that. That's eighty quid. I guess if you've got an Echo, Amazon Alexa, and, and you've got Destiny Two it maybe would be worth checking out what's for a laugh. I can't really see it being a valuable tool. Ghost does f all in the game anyway. Like you get your, you, you, you have to whip the ghost out to get your hover bike thing, that's it. I mean, it's, it's very limited functionality from Ghost. I'm sure people are gonna tell me I'm wrong, but what else is there for it to, to ask it to do? I don't know. From what I hear about the Alexa thing, you've got to actually shout at it in order for it to Pretty much. for it to listen to you. Now, I live at home with three girls already. I, I can't think of introducing another female voice into the house that I've got to shout at for them to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's developer Scott Cawthon released a new game on Steam recently titled Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. On the surface is a retro pizza themed tycoon game with quite a cheery veneer to boot. But as players have already found out, Freddy Fazbear's latest offering is anything but a slice of heaven. This is our intern James who's written this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beneath the happy-go-lucky initial impressions, Pizzeria Simulator is, for all intents and purposes, Five Nights at Freddy's Six, complete with jump scares. This is five months after Scott Cawthon said he is cancelling FNAF 6 and putting the FNAF franchise on indefinite hiatus. Does anyone shorten Five Nights at Freddy's to FNAF? Yeah. That's my question. Yeah, they do. They All do, right. mate. At the very least, I do. <laughs> FNAF 6. Rightly Smart or wrongly. Me. And as you can imagine, YouTube Let's Players are already losing their shit over this because this will keep them in video content for at least the next 12 to 18 months. And on the subject of releasing a new Five Nights game, Cawthorn said last week via a recent Steam update, quote, I refuse to let an entire year go by without a game release. So I'm putting together something fun for all of you for the holidays. He's releasing this game without any ceremony or anything. It's like completely a viral marketing, you could say. It's, it's like the, the game isn't technically out it's just a part of another game but it, it definitely is five nights at Freddy's six probably i mean it, it's a it's a weird way to release a game surely you could do it better but then again you know the, we're this, talking about it the strength of the five nights at Freddy's series is people playing on youtube is people talking about it it's going to do well isn't it because everyone plays five nights at Freddy's. let's be honest i mean streamers and youtubers i don't mean us because mm. we're actual gamers never never touched it <laughs> So there you have it, Battlefront, PUBG, Destiny, or FNAF, what tickles your fancy, what floats your boat, let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new around here, there's another video to watch there on your screen, support us on Patreon if you're awesome, and we'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.